Every nation has its flag and every company has its logo. So too the Society of Jesus. Their logo bears the first three letters of Jesus' name in Greek, which is read as I House. The life of Ignatius Loyola gives an insight and the identity about the religious order he founded. Ignatius is believed to have taken birth on somewhere before 23rd of October 1491 at the castle of Loyola located at Spain. At the request of Ignatius's mother, she was taken to the stable where she gave birth to her 13th child. He was baptized by the name Iniago. It was in 1506 that he adopted the last name De Loyola in reference to the city where he was born, where Iniago was 16. He was sent to serve Juan Velazquez, the treasurer of the kingdom of Castile. Two years later, he found Antonio Marini de Lara, Duke of Najera and Viceroy of Navarre. Somewhere around this time, he changed his name to Ignatius, a simple variant of his name. Ignatius was built to become a soldier and participated in many battles, none of which left him with an injury. His leadership qualities and diplomacy also proved to be very useful. By 1521, Iniago had raised himself to the position of an officer, defending the fortress of the town of Pamplona. During the French attack, a cannonball struck Iniago, wounded one of his legs and breaking the other. Returning to the castle, he underwent several surgical operations. His situation turned from bad to worse and he was asked by his doctors to prepare for death. While suffering from the leg wound and near death, St. Peter's appeared to Ignatius during convalescence and restored him to health. During his recovery, he resorted to reading books. With no other option available, he was forced to read books on saints and the life of Christ. Ludolf of Saxons De Vita Christi influenced his life greatly and here the transformation in him began. During his healing, he had visions of Mary and infant Jesus in her hand which energized him. After healing, when he was praying to God, an earthquake shook his house and as a result, he decided to leave home and kin and hurried to Monasarath. Throughout his journey, he had to pass through certain incidents and was filled with love of Virgin Mary and thus came to know that punishment for the wrongdoing was not what God wanted and also all his impure tendencies were extinguished. He thus visited the Benedictine Monastery, Santa Maria de Monteserrat in 1522 where he gave up his military vestments right from his sword and knife to his fine clothing. From then on he started praying and beating himself up soundly three times a day in the solitude from March 1522 to February 1523. Ignatius joined with the poor, the poor in the begging for arms. In spite of his penance, he experienced no loss of strength. This disrupted his entire body system and ruined his stomach completely. Due to this, Ignatius suffered many problems in the later years of his life. Ignatius had a vision of the Trinity while praying at the Dominance Church in Manresa. Ignatius sees Christ during the elevation of the host. Ignatius was so wrapped in prayer at Manasera that he seemed lifeless. At Manresa, Ignatius is inspired to write the spiritual exercises from March 1522 to February 1523. These visions, though never revealed, are said to be represent Ignatius' encounter with God. Around this time, the idea of forming Society of Jesus shaped in his mind. He now wished to visit the Holy Land Jerusalem. Ignatius resumed his journey from Andresa crossing Barcelona and finally reaching Rome. Before boarding the ship, Ignatius developed his trust in God. He threw on the ground the money that he had begged for his journey to Jerusalem. 
He visited the holy places such as the Mount of Olives and thought deeply about the footprints of Christ left after the accession. After the meeting with Pope Adrian VI, he was granted permission to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the holy land where the dangerous situation that were existing at that point of time and the threat of being excommunicated forced him to leave the place. Jesus appeared to Ignatius while he prayed at night. Ignatius slept under portico of San Marco in Venice, January 1524. A servant of the Franciscans drags Ignatius back from chapel of accession. Captured by Spanish soldiers, Ignatius thinks of Jesus before Pilate. Unfamiliar with Latin language, Ignatius at the age of 33 enrolled himself in a school in Barcelona to study languages and grammar. After about two years, he gained admission in the University of Alcala and then in the University of Salamanca, where he used to gather students and adults, explaining the Gospels and teaching them the right way to pray and attempted to restore abused women to a secure life. But he was arrested for doing so and was allowed to teach only the students below age of 14. Unhappy with this, Ignatius left for Paris. In Paris, Ignatius started studying Latin grammar and literature, philosophy and theology. There, a house burnt as a testament to Ignatius' innocence. The director of the college in Paris falls at feet of Ignatius, recognizing his innocence. In the meantime, he became friends with Francis Xavier and Peter Faber, who were also his roommates. With a few other fellow students whom Ignatius had inspired, the group decided to take vows of chastity and poverty and move to a holy land. Then Ignatius throws himself into an icy river and promises to stay there until a young man had encountered changes in his life. For reason of health, Ignatius returned to Spain with a reputation for holiness. Although ill in Spain, he worked hard. He cured many people by the sign of the cross by lifting his eyes to God and thus they were healed. He restored a woman who was close to death with tuberculosis. He returned to Italy and Venice, then met his companions in France and was ordained. Then Ignatius visited Simon Rodriguez who was sick. Jesus points to Ignatius as an example of holy life. In a deserted place not far from the city, God the Father appeared to Ignatius and revealed his son carrying the cross. A voice said, I will be propitious to you in Rome. This inspired Ignatius to name his society after Jesus. In 1539, during the month of Lent, Ignatius invited his former companions to Rome. After much discussions and prayers, the group came to an animus conclusion of forming a community. It was decided that they would appoint a superior general who would hold office for life and to whom they would owe obedience. After receiving the approval from Pope Paul III in 1540, the order was formed and came to be known as the Society of Jesus. Though reluctant himself, Ignatius became the superior as he was unanimously elected by the other members. On April 22, 1541, the Friday of Easter week, the friends pronounced their vows in the newly formed order at the Church of St. Paul outside the walls. Ignatius offers the constitutions to the Trinity in prayer in 1544. Sometime later, Devils torment Ignatius at night. Ignatius receives the gift of tears while praying and flames appear above his head when he offers the host at mass. Ignatius happens to encounter prophets who predict the future. For the next 15 years, Ignatius did what he loved doing, teaching catechism to children, directing adults in the spiritual exercises and walking among the poor and in hospitals. The eight-member Society of Jesus transformed into a huge organization with almost a thousand members. It had colleges and houses all over Europe, even extending to countries like Brazil and Japan. Earlier, Ignatius wrote his letters himself, but the enormous growth of the organization made it impossible for him to communicate on his own. So in 1547, he appointed a secretary, Father Polanco. The main motto of Jesuits became Ad Maiorium De Glorium, for the greater glory of God. Ignatius had opened schools in Italy, Portugal, Netherlands, Spain, Germany and India, basically for the education of the new young Jesuit recruits. In 1548, his book Spiritual Exercises was also printed. In the year 1550, the Society of Jesus was confirmed by Pope Julius III. After this time, he offered to resign as a superior general because of his diminishing influence. Starting in 1553, 
and continuing over the next two years, Ignatius dictated his life story to his secretary. The stomach problem, which started early in the life of Saint Ignatius, gave him much trouble. During the summer of 1556, the pain worsened. However, on July 30th, 1556, around midnight, the stomach pain of Ignatius worsened. Sometime later, he left for the heaven abode, making the date of his death to be 31st July. On July 27, 1609, Ignatius was beatified by Pope Paul V. After 13 years, on March 12, 1622, he was canonized by Pope Gregory XV. His feast day is celebrated on July 31st every year. Saint Ignatius has been venerated as the patron saint of Catholic soldiers, the ordinariate of Philippine military, Basque country, and various towns and cities in the native region.